Hey guys, Steve Harris here with MuseThemes.com. Thanks for stopping by. We have a brand new widget for you today called the VersaSlide. I think this is one of the most innovative new widgets that we've come out with in a while. It was originally designed specifically for a navigation system. However, once we built it, we realized it could be used for a really wide variety of uses. So as you can see here, we have a menu button in the bottom corner. If we click on the menu button, the entire page slides out of the way and reveals a completely new page. So this is a completely separate page within the Muse file. And if we hit close, then the original slides back into place. So you could use this as we've done in the demo for a navigation. You could use it for your contact form, your contact area. You could use it for a services page, anything that you want persistently shown throughout the site. So this widget is also really easy to set up. Let me jump into Muse and show you how to make it work. So the first thing I've done here is we've created a brand new site and I'll drop the widget on the page and show you how it looks initially. So we'll drag out the Versa slide once you've downloaded it and we'll take a look at the options. So the first thing you'll see here is it says internal page to display and page name. Below that we have the option to enable an external URL. So what this means is it's pointing to the page that you want to reveal in that menu. So to do that or to create a, let's say a navigation system, we create a new page in our site and let's just go ahead and call this one menu. Now an important thing to note is if you're using the automatic navigation widget, then what you may want to do is just right click or control click on this uh, page and go down to menu options and click exclude page from menus because you may not want this navigation page showing up in the automatic menus. So now that we've done that, we've created this kind of menu page. I'm just going to go into it and I'm going to apply a browser background fill. So let's just use this. This is actually what we used in our demo. There you go. And now we'll go back to the home page and on where our widget is, it, in the internal page to display, we want to display the menu page. So you don't need to enter an entire URL or anything like that, just the name of the page. Now we should be able to preview this in its state right now. Um, one thing also to note on previewing is because we need to see all the pages on the site, just make sure you're previewing the full site in the browser and not just the page. So when I click preview site, we have our menu button in the top left. And if I click on it, you can see that that menu page is revealed behind. So it's really simple to set up and it's really beautiful widget. So let's go ahead and look at some of the other options we have for this. Um, the external URL is if you've hosted your previewer, the page that you want to display on an external location. So if I enable this option and we preview this again, you'll see that when I click the menu button this time, that actually the Muse Themes website comes into it. So you may want to select either one of those options. Now we have the button setup. So we've created a default button type. And as you can see right now, default is set and there are styling options below, but you can also use a custom button with a graphic style name. Now we've done this in many other videos before, but basically I recommend always using a state button. So you drag a state button out onto the page. Then we'll just style up the state button however you want. Give it a graphic style name. So let's create a graphic style for it called, I'll just call it button just like that. And then on our widget, we just need to make sure we have a custom button set and we call this button just like that. So when I preview this in the browser, let's see if it works. There you go. So our new state buttons there and when we click on it, the menu comes out. So as you can see though, our default button is quite stylish. Um, it has a kind of tasteful CSS animation on it where you have the typical hamburger icon here. And as you mouse over, it expands a little bit. And when you click on it, it rotates to an arrow, noting that you can go back to your original page. So if you do want to use that default button, I'll just delete this custom one out. Just make sure you have default set here, and then we can change all the styling controls. So we can change the background and icon colors, or and we can set also the active state colors for that. Now we have the button positions. So this widget by default will pin the button. It was just something we needed to do in terms of controlling the location of all these elements that are sliding in. Now we have the button position type. Right now it's set as default and the default positions we've applied are the top left, center, right, and then all the way through the middle and the bottom. So you basically can pin your button in any location that you want on your site. Now, if you don't want to have it in one of those spots and you want to manually position, you just need to change this drop down to manual and you have the option to adjust the button position from the top left and or from the top and from the left. And these are using pixels.
So this gives you a little bit more control, but if you wanted to align your button to the top right, for example, you wouldn't try and set this to 1000 pixels to the, from the left and 50 pixels down. You would just set the button positioning to default and we'd change this to top right. And when I do that, let's just change some style options too. We'll make the button with a black background and we'll leave the active state background orange. So now when I preview this in the browser, you can see that the menu option or the menu button does appear on the right side. It's black and when I click on it, the menu slides out from the left. Okay, so then we have a few options for actually controlling that animation. So we have a transition direction. So we could change this from sliding in from the left to any of these options here. So let's say we want it to slide in from the bottom. Now we can change the animation timing. So this is obviously in seconds. So let's go down a little bit. Um, actually, like let's make it a little bit slower. We'll go to one second. And the easing controls obviously control a little bit of the motion path that it's going to take in. So let's just select one of these. And so this should slide in from the bottom a little bit slower. Let's preview that again. Okay, so now when we click on the icon, it comes in from the bottom. It had an interesting easing path there. And you can see that the arrow actually now points in the correct direction. So that arrow will adjust depending on which transition location you come in from. So that's the entire panel. It's actually really, really simple to set up and you have a ton of customization options when you're building this widget. Just remember that your separate page should probably be on the same row in your site plan as this. You wouldn't want your menu page as a sub-level page a couple below. So that's it for the VersaSlide widget. We named it VersaSlide because we thought it was one of the most versatile tools that you have in Muse today. Uh, let us know what you're building with it. We're excited to see what you can do. Thanks again for watching and best of luck. Cheers.